as a new person, you know, you're you're probably finding adjustable TV videos. Um, maybe you're you kind of something popped up on your radar somewhere, or you, you're talking to your neighbor or your brother-in-law, and they're like, "Oh yeah, you should check out a career in claims. You could make one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, or two twenty-five, or whatever." Which you can, right? Um, but the thing I want to kind of touch on and, and kind of like have a discussion about here with my boy James Mathis is there are some conditions that go with that. And especially as a brand new person, um, I think that there's, um, and I was actually having some, excuse me, some conversations with um, I firm people, some of my partners and, and some of the people that are in my professional network. And we were talking about this. And one, one person in particular said that they've had new people who are under the impression that they can walk into a $300,000 a year job as an independent adjuster, and they won't take any assignments if they're not guaranteed that level of income. And he's then this person was like, we're not doing that. Thanks for calling. Right. And this, this, so there's, there's some, I think there's some unrealistic expectations out there. Number one, number two, and this is what I want to get you. People who are new, um, who, who haven't watched a lot of adjuster TV videos where we talk about this, uh, are feeling like because of what they're seeing on, on some social media, that they are entitled to negotiate fees, right? Negotiate pay, negotiate the split, all that stuff. And then, turn down assignments because they're waiting for a better assignment, right? So in other words, if they're like, well, I don't want to, I hate Texas in the summertime, so I'm not going to go on that hailstorm you just, you, you called and asked me to go to, right? I'm going to wait for a remote something or other, or, you know, call me when you got something in Colorado or whatever, right? If a person has those expectations, they're you only have a, a, my point on this is that if there's really only a, there's kind of a narrow window, right? You can start burning bridges if you keep, if you maintain the negotiating, the trying to demand higher pay, even though you have zero grounds to stand on as a new person, nobody knows that you, if you can do anything or not. You don't even know if you can do this job or not. And then you're um, uh, turning down work because you're waiting for some sort of an ideal kind of work that you really, that you think you really want to do or that you feel like you're entitled to. And this person I was talking to, and actually several people I was talking to, they said, listen, we're only going to call so many times, right? You know, second chance, you know, first, th first time we call and you turn something down, or maybe it's because you had a, uh, your, you know, your daughter's getting married next weekend and, and there's a whole thing and all the family's there. Okay, fine. You know, we'll, Second chance, probably not a problem, right? Second time we call and you're like, ah, well, you know, we were just, uh, we were just leaving for a little family road trip, da, 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 da. So, you know, sorry, I can't do it this time either, right? May, may or may not be, depending on what the event is, there may or may not be a third chance, in other words. And there definitely, one person said in 35 years of, of being in this industry, never heard of a fourth chance. So that's kind of, that's what I wanted to chit chat a little bit about. And I wanted to kind of get your impressions because James, I know that you are um, a go getter and you're a hustler and can so, you be an adjuster without being a hustler? I hear the stories that you tell about that where, and I hear it all the time where people say they're new and they're, they're, they have this certain expectation. Well, you can go through the videos in, in the library of adjuster TV and hear my story and how I started. I mean, my first, my first, my first month as an IA, okay, I made seventy five hundred bucks, okay, and that is phenomenal wow. for this business, okay. I mean, my, straight out of the shoot, boom, seventy five hundred bucks. I was, I was tickled pink because that was way beyond. I came into this with realistic expectations. I knew that I could come in this thing and make six figures a year. I knew I could come in and make some really great money. I've made really great money in my life, so I know what great money is, okay. But I'm also realistic enough to know that whenever I walk into a scenario, I'm not the professional the day that I walk in. I am not the I am not the expert when I walk in, and and I have to. I, this is a learning process. I could take your class, Matt, and it it's some of the best information anybody will ever get. Okay, you're fantastic at what you do, what you teach people. There's other companies out there that train that are fantastic. There's some that 
I've actually looked at their material and I'm going, how do you get away with this? But anyway, people are just <laughs> desperate to make money. But even after taking that class and even after gaining that knowledge and experience, there's so much that you don't know until you put your hands on it. Okay. Yeah. It, and, and to come in and think that you're going to make two or 300,000 your first year is not realistic. Now, again, we've had the conversation. I made six figures my first year, but what did it take for me to do that? As we've discussed before, I mean, I hardly saw my family for several months at a time, you know, but I was determined I was going to make it into this business and, and I sacrificed a lot, but and I still do. I mean, if you would, if, I'm working a fee schedule out here in Arizona right now. That's probably one of the worst fee schedules I've ever worked. Honestly. I mean, it's, it is in the dumps, but it's given me a base to work off of while I'm letting other people know where I'm at and bringing that other work in. Okay. To where I'm not dependent on that, that stuff. So you, you it's, everything is baby steps. And even as with my experience in yeah. the business and my contacts in the business, you still cannot walk in and demand everything if you want to work. Okay. I can sit there and demand all day long and I get it. I, there are companies that pay me 70% of the fee schedule and some really nice fee schedules. Okay. But at the same time, there's still companies I work with that pay me 60%. You know, I don't sit there and get hung up over yeah. that. So I can either choose to, oh yeah, I can go here and make, and I've made some stupid money earlier this year. And I could sit there and go, well, that, that's great. I worked it and, you know, I can sit here. I took off five weeks before I came out here. Okay. But I was moving a house, everything else. But when I got out here, I knew that there was things I had to do to get set up. Okay. I could choose to sit here and wait for the great paying work. Okay. And live off my bank account and let my bank account dwindle. Or I could sit there and take work, you know, and, and, yeah. People just have to humble themselves. As an adjuster, you need to know more than just how to read an HO3 policy and how to sketch a three-level house in Xactimate. You also need to know how to tell hail damage from wear and tear on composition shingles. The number one resource for damage identification books, trainings, and certifications is Hague Education. Not only that, but they provide building inspection and desk adjuster trainings and certifications as well. These are the guys who make the classic Hague Damage ID books that I used for years to educate myself, my insureds, and quite a few roof sales guys on what is damage that we can pay for and everything else. Looking at you, Bird Poop. Get a discount on all books, tools, certifications, and other trainings with the code ADJUSTERTV at checkout at HagueEducation.com. You know what's boring? Insurance policies. You know what's not boring? More Adjuster TV vids right here.